I know that there's often a challenge. I had the same challenge when I got started. It's easy to lead with the product, hard to lead with the business sometimes, and that was the same for me. Till I got comfortable with a few key thoughts that work for me. They may not work for you, but I'd like to share them. First of all, when I look around in the world, um, I thought at first, why, why would I have an obsession about money? I thought I had an obsession with not, about money because it's in business and, and people are, why are we in business? Well, primary measurement of business is to make money. But what I realized, it wasn't necessarily me having an obsession with money, it's that the world at this point in time is obsessed with money. It hasn't always been this way because money wasn't even in circulation widely until, what, a couple hundred years ago? Money just was something kings had, but we didn't have money. So now money is a big deal because it represents so much. It represents an accumulation of power. And you know, if I work and save money, I've accumulated energy power, money power. It represents a measure of worth. You know, This is worth more than that, and that's why it's priced differently. It's a storage, a storehouse of, 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 of energy, um, a way to save. You know, it, it represents a lot of things. And right now, at this point in time of humanity, it's huge. Money and the lack of money are just huge. And so I got it. That's why I think about money and think about business, is because that's what's up for people right now. You know, 1,000, 2,000 years ago, in the last big turn, uh, it was about religion. And now it's about money and spirituality. So I see business as a path, a spiritual path. It's just what it is. Um, so that said, when I look at business, there's the low road of business, which is just straight commerce, and then there's the high road of business. There's business to create profits, and then there's, there's service to create profits, and then there's profits to create service. If you think about those two for a minute, it's the same activity, but a different orientation. So as a younger, more immature, less developed person, I was doing service to make profits. I would do work to make money. But now I find that money allows me to do the work I came to do, the work I love doing. Mm -hmm. So we all have to have a certain amount of money. Okay, well that's not news. But beyond that, I found more money doesn't make me more happy. I mean, there are more things I can do. I have more choices. So service for profits, profits for service. There's a high road of business. And then there's this thing called sacred commerce, which is commerce not just to gather more money, but commerce with a higher intention. I started looking at this thing called sales. And sales has gotten a bad rap. It's kind of a dirty word. But do a little research on sales, and the root of the word sales is the same as the root of the word service. And true sales is about serving others. It's about giving them information, giving them options, and then allowing them to choose. One of my early mentors taught me that um, our job is not to beg, cajole, manipulate, or somehow convince people that they should do this. Not at all. Our job is simply to present information in a professional way to as many people as possible and allow them the dignity of their choice and be unattached to the result. Hmm. Took all that pressure off, took that performance pressure, like I've got to do it right, took all the win or lose pressure off, like, oh, I hope they do it. Actually, as a service, providing information to those that want to hear it, and offering them a choice point, and then not pressuring, not being attached to it. That, I think, is the beginning of a sacred exchange, of being of service to people. Look, I know what we have is precious and valuable, and can actually, I, I know for a fact that people are alive today because of using our products that wouldn't be alive. I just know that. And I know that the more people that get our products, the more benefit and the more um, awareness and the more evolved they become. I just see it all the time. So it's not a, an embarrassment or reluctance about the products. For I think for me it was early on a reluctance about this thing called business because I never really looked at what it is. 
you know, I grew up in the 60s and 70s, and you know, the business, the corporate state was the enemy, and uh, businesses were evil, and people had money were evil, and all this stuff, all this shadow around money. And it just weighed real heavy and colored my views, and there was no way I was going to become one of them. So it, it's been a bit of a journey for me, and I invite all of us to look at that journey. And what, what is the higher road of business? What's the sacred intent of business? I don't believe that God is not everywhere. God's everywhere. It's in business, money, all of it. So what part of Godness can I bring to my offering and my business? And how can I hold this that business is truly a service? It's service for itself. And then the prophets will come because of profound service. So in the offering, um, I also know that when I offer a room of people, 100 people, I say, who wants better supplements? Some people raise their hand, but who wants more money in their life? Everybody, sometimes both hands go up. Everybody's after the money, with good reason, because we all know more choices, more money, more choices, more options. So. I default now to offering the business, and maybe we shouldn't even call it the business. I mean, I don't know what to call it. I hold it not as I held business 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. I hold it as an opening, an offering, a genuine offering for people to find their peace around this thing with lack of money and the corporate structure and the business and all that shadow. So there's a place here. I know when people come into this community, if they have a lot of that going on, they can lose that real quick. Because when they get that, we're a half a billion dollar enterprise. We've moved over half a billion dollars worth of products so far. That's not small, that's not some mom and pop down the street, that's big business, that's corporate business, that's huge. And yet, look at who we are, and look at how we are, and look at what we do. It doesn't have to be the way it's been. And I believe we're on the cutting edge. We're creating business with soul and heart. This is a path with heart. This is, this is something that provides meaning for life if we let it. So why wouldn't I want to offer that to people? So then it becomes a way, how do I language it? Yeah. How do I put it into a language that makes sense? And here's the thing that I discovered early on. So one of those hidden gems, but it's not really hidden. So if I'm approaching someone, I just, Kind of, I don't close my eyes, but I kind of close my eyes and I look inside and say, what's true for me about my life force business? And then I share that. And I can use business terms like we all can, but the message can be much deeper than commerce. It can be a form of sacred commerce. It can be about connecting with the person on a deeper level and offering them, looking at them and connecting to that part inside when I mentally close my eyes and say, what's true in my heart? What am I up to? Why am I doing this? And then sharing from that place. And I found that people generally will respond pretty profoundly to that. And the words, they're hearing the words, but the words are just sort of like, uh, you know, they're, they're just the medium. They're not taking the words as the truth, they're taking the underlying intent as the truth. And I think most people want what we have. Mm -hmm. They want this. Mm -hmm. Even if they're in you know, a high-powered, typical corporate business, they want this on some level. Now, whether this is the day for them to choose it or not, that's not my affair. My affair is to offer it. Their affair is to either choose or not choose, but hopefully to choose from a place of choice, not from a place of pleasing me or feeling pressured by me, but choosing for them. And you know, just the fact of the matter is, for most people in my life, this is not the right time. But the offer in and of itself triggers something. I mean, I've never seen them again, but they, they suddenly know, oh, there is another way. There is that. This is not for me right now, but there is that. And my take is that opens just a little, sometimes just a little bit of freedom inside the skull or wherever they're processing this and go, oh yeah, yeah, there is that. So um, I invite you to, to, to maybe do that, just mentally sort of close your eyes in that interaction just before and say, what's true for me? What's true in my heart about what we do? Because for me, what's true is we're, we're offering, we're offering love, we're offering an outpouring of genuine 
God energy coming through in its pure form, and it's cloaked in a business. Mm -hmm. So, maybe that's helpful.